There are three different methods we use when, when we are adding items to an array or combining arrays. In this tutorial, we are going to look at the differences and why you may want to use one over the other. It is push versus concat versus spread. Before we get started, make sure to click that bell button and subscribe and remember the discount links to all my courses in the description. Also, my website has a list of all the tutorials I've published. There are over 200 now. The description also has a link to earn script. Remember, you can use script to get free courses. Now, I generally use push when I'm adding items to an array. And then when I'm combining arrays, I usually use the spread operator. But I think it can be important to understand all the differences when deciding which to use. So first, let's take a look at how I use things. So if I wanted to add something to array one, I would use push to do that. So I'm adding a number six to that array. That's the way I would do that. Now, if I wanted to combine these arrays, then I do something like this. And this is where I use the spread operator. I just declare an array and then inside that I spread out the values from each of the arrays that I want to add to the new array. So that's what I will generally use. Now I don't use concat very much, but let's look at the differences and some reasons for using one over the other. Now first, let me show, I'm going to comment these out here. And then let me show a statement here that you might that you could possibly see. You probably haven't seen it much, but let's say we wanted to add a 6 to array 1 just like we did up here with array.push. Well, how would you do that with concat? Well, here's how you do it. You just put the 6 inside an array like this and then you're adding the two together. Now, why would you see a statement like that? Why would you want to do this as opposed to push? Well, let's save this and jump to the console. I want to show you something. So if we come out here to the console, I refresh. Do this a bit. Now, let's see if array one has changed. It doesn't have a value six. So what happened? What happened when we did that statement? Well, let me do it again here at the console and you can see what happened. If I do array1.concat and then, whoops, and then I'm passing in a six inside an array like this. Now notice what happens when I press return. So concat is going to return a new array. It doesn't modify array one, and that's why we don't see a change in array one. It doesn't mutate this, and that is a reason why you may want to use concat instead of push in a situation like this. For example, if I do array one dot push with the six, what that is going to return is the new length of the array, where concat returns a new array. So we would want to set it up so we're doing assigning it to a new array, something like this. And then we do the array one dot concat, because then we're getting the new array. So that's a situation where you want to maybe use concat over push, is if you don't want to mutate the array, but you're adding something to it. All right. Now, another difference you may not have seen before an application of push that maybe you haven't seen is we can use push to combine arrays. This is how I usually do it right here, which is what I showed, but push can be used to combine arrays as well. Now the trick is you have to use it with the spread operator, but it works. So it'd be something like this, array one dot push. And what we're doing is we're combining array two into array one. And so we would spread out array two like that. And that would combine the two of those together. All right. So really, we have three ways to combine arrays. Let me put the other two right here. And let me do it this way. Let me assign these two a variable. So let's go other one. Now we'll do let other two. And we're going to set this one equal to array one dot concat. Oops. 
like that, and we're attaching ray two. And then finally, this is the technique that I used above. Other three, we're gonna let that equal an array, and inside of that array, we'll just spread out array one, comma, spread out array two. So those are three different ways to combine arrays. Now let's look at the difference. So let me go ahead and save this. And then at the console, let's refresh this page first. And then at the console, let's take a look at these. So first, other one. What are we getting with other one? Remember, other one is using the push method. So whenever we use push, it returns the length of the new array. So it created a new array, but the problem is, what did it do? It mutated array one. Now, since we mutated array one, and now it's the combination of those two, look what's gonna happen with other two and other three. We're using both of those again. And so that's gonna mess up our results here. So if we look at other two, whoops. Now we've got A, B, C, D, E twice in that array. And that's going to be the same thing with other three as well. All right. So you can see the danger here of mutating an array if you don't intend to. And that's one of the dangers of, of push. Obviously, if we put this one at the end, then these two would look the same. However, array one would be mutated, it would just happen at the end. Now, one last question we need to discuss about these. So we can see the differences in how these are used, but which is faster? So I did a little bit of research to, to find out which of these operators are the fastest to use for, for what we're trying to do. The spread operator, this right here, is the fastest. And then push. Push is second fastest, and then concat. And concat is quite slow. Um, and so for speed purposes, if you're trying to decide based upon speed, you should avoid using cat. However, in a situation up here where you want to just push something onto array, but you don't want to mutate it, that might be a situation where you would want to use concat. So that's the speed considerations. All right, if you found this helpful, please hit the like button and also subscribe. Remember the discount links to all my courses in the description section. Click that bell button to be notified about new releases. I release tutorials as often as I can. And once again, thanks for watching.